Hey, packaging designers. This is Mr. Almena. I just wanted to take a moment to um, set up the elements and principles of design packaging. So um, in this particular lesson, just to kind of save on time and there's no confusion when we're doing class and session, I decided to make this recording uh, to support you in um, understanding the elements and principles of design. So uh, let's jump into it. Um, we will begin by sharing and uh, learning a little bit more about elements and principles of design. And I will also review the next exercise uh, while we were at it. So um, let's begin. Okay. So a couple of things. Um, we have elements and principles of design, and I'm just going to kind of set up a few formats here. When it comes to the elements and principles and designs, guys, there's a couple of things I, want to, I wanted to keep in mind, okay? Uh, first of all, objectives. Um, in this lecture, we're gonna go over what is packaging design, the functions of packaging design, or what is the function? What are the elements of packaging design? And what um, what is sustainable packaging design uh, um, examples look like, okay? So this is the uh, the nuts and bolts, as you can, uh, if you think about it, of what this whole process looks like well not the process but what it is once it once it's completed okay we'll talk about process throughout the coming weeks right um we will be kind of focusing on sustainable packaging design um, as we move forward um globally we really need to start looking at um sustainability as a staple um in packaging design in the past it normally was never even a, th a, a thing to think about because we weren't facing global issues back in the you know 50s and 60s and we were using all types of materials that's a very different story for today in the 21st century and so what was once um a principle or mindset that was really not something of the past we are now in my opinion um we need to include this okay and this is where i could possibly differ in some schools i would say on average any responsible um learning institution that is teaching packaging design um, should include sustainable packaging, period. Um, and if they don't, well, then that's, you know, that's a, that's a missed opportunity because sustainable packaging could ultimately save cost on manufacturing, um, which is a win for any agency or company um, that is trying to sell a product. So take that into consideration as we move forward, okay? Now, packaging design is really the discipline of creating a structure and visual surface graphics to carry, identify, describe, protect, display, and promote a product, okay? And there's a lot of ranges, bottles, labels, boxes, inner packaging, right? There's so, much, uh, so many factors that go into it. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's got to be something that a customer will remember, something that a customer appreciates when using it, feels like they're connecting to a brand as they handle it, and um, build on certain brand values, right? Fun, community, authenticity, to motivate purchase. So at the heart, the core of this is to get someone to buy the product, okay? This is the goal. You want someone to buy your product. Packaging has to function, period. So I'm very practical when it comes to um, you know, my teaching. So we wanna make sure that you, that you never miss the goal, right? We're trying to sell and we're trying to contain. We're trying to sell and function. That's the main goal when it comes to designing a package, right? Now there's things along with that, right? But at the core, um, know that those things are key, okay? That's at the heart of everything. We, we're trying to have someone purchase the product, but we want someone to also, um, we want your product to function, right? And there's different types of functions. Does it contain? Does it identify? Does it protect? Does it preserve? Does it carry? Does it communicate? Does it display? Does it advertise, right? It's an experience. So we really want to look at every every package as like this little mini experience that communicates the brand to the customer. 
that communicates this company and what they're all about to the person handling it, using it. It's, a, it's all about the experience, right? I say customer, but um, people would refer to the customer also as user, the person who uses it. I like customer because um, what you're trying to do with a customer is, is that you're trying to serve them. You're trying to help them. You're trying to build up on them, right? Um, so that's really at the heart of what we're trying to do. We're trying to serve our customer and, to, and, and when we serve our customer, we're trying to create um, an experience that is very memorable um, that they can walk away from, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So we want them to have an experience and build off of that experience, okay? Okay, now every, uh, now every package should have an identity. Packaging design gives an identity to the product. So shapes, forms, colors, just like we do with logos, Think about the package as sort of like a three-dimensional extension of a logo um, times function, times use, times additional bells and whistles, right? And so we really want to um, communicate that message, right? Um, it's about giving an identity to the product, okay, at the end of the day. All right, moving on. Okay, I want to make sure I'm not missing out on my background sounds here, right? Packaging design protects the product. Okay, um, it does protect it and it distributes it, right? So does your package pr not only protect the thing that's, that's uh, in it, but is it also set up in a way that allows it to be easily distributed across the country or across the world, right? Effective packaging, uh, effective packaging will always ensure that this thing is protected, right? Mechanically, manually, environmentally, um, along its journey across the country or world, to the store, right? And if I had to break it down in terms of distribution, um, you know, look at the bottom of the graphic here, which says consumer. Like we always think as designers that that's the point, that's the point, right? That, and that's where we start technically, right? Is why we start with the consumer at the end, right? But at, when we are done with the consumer experience, we have to kind of switch our, our brain and figure, and figure out and think about or can, and consider, right? Hey, what does this look like when it's shipped to the to the store or the retailer? What does this look like when it gets distributed on wholesale, um, like a Costco, right? What does this look like when it gets distributed from the factory? And if I use like a, a can of beer as an example, um, or a can of soda, uh, or just any drink for that matter, um, in a can, then you can see here on the left that we have to consider the journey, right? From the can to the six pack box packaging, to the um, bigger box where multiple six pack packages are stored, to the container or the pallet, I should say. Um, that's that wooden thing on the bottom that stacks up all those boxes, to the metal container that gets lifted on a crane onto a truck, which then gets sent to a boat because a good majority of our food is also shipped from overseas, um, not only locally, which we should have more local food, just a side note, um, saves on all the cost of everything we're packaging, right? Um, and then it gets off the boat back onto the, the truck, um, which then the truck takes that metal uh, container to the distribution center. Distribution center unloads it, puts it in smaller trucks that gets distributed to your store. Then the store has to open that box, which then has to unload the six pack, which then ultimately ends up in a customer's hand and in their refrigerator. So the journey is huge. There's a distribution that goes into this. And so you're designing for that as well. You know, we love the, the final product, but at some point when you get really into packaging design, you really have to take into consideration all that. That's kind of like the hidden world that people don't, don't take into account. And so while I love the concept portion of it, we also have to take into account the, account the di distribution. Another thing we have to take into account is the nutritional information, right? Um, by law, all food has to have nutritional information because people need to know what they're consuming and they have to have the right to, to choose what is healthy and what is not, quote unquote, right? And so um, we people need to be informed. And so nutritional information in packaging design is huge, right? Because it is a mandate, it is legal, it is law. So we also have to take into account that these packages have 
information such as calories, fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrates, protein, vitamins, percent daily value. Um, and so uh, this information is given to us, but we ultimately have to design labels for this or position them in the package on one of your panels or surfaces that communicates that information. And of course, packaging has to attract attention because you're competing with hundreds, if not thousands of different uh, consumables out there. Consumable means consume. Consume means to take in, to eat, to use, right? Uh, and so we have to take into account that all the competition that's on the shelf. And so we have to attract attention. Now, even though we're going through at the time of this recording a pandemic or, the, or what looks like the end of the pandemic or the beginning of the distribution of a vaccine, um, there is an online uh, component to this, but there's still people going to the store wearing their masks, which will eventually turn into, you know, you know, less people wearing masks and eventually, but people are still going to the store, period. And when they go to the store, there are still sh products that are competing for attention and you have to take that into account. Um, how do we design so that it also um, differentiates and stands out from the whole? And so the, at the heart, this is the elements of packaging design, okay? You know, professor, okay, that's great. But what is it at, at the heart? Like what's the, what's the, what's the, you know, the core fun, the core list? Here it is. The elements of design packaging are two, two dimensions. One dimension is the structure of the package. So there, there are structural design elements and then there are the visual elements, okay? Um, so we are familiar with visual design right the principles of design elements of design now we're going from 2d to pushing forward to 3d and so 3d requires structure that means the shape of the object uh, or container the sh the size of the container the size of, uh, or excuse me the material what it's made out of the form what is the you know form that this you know container takes right this packaging will take and opening and closing like how to, how will a customer be able to use this and open it and close it for uh, reuse? So there's the structural element. Then we have the visual element, right? The graphic design side of it, which is your brand name, right? That's the brand identity, the logo, product name, right? There's the nutritional information that's uh, added onto it, the manufacturing information. Then there's the, um, the handling information as well. Um, and so within those information, uh, those information domains, there's the, you know, data manufacturing, like I said, then there's the handling instructions, which are directions, expirations, hazards, barcodes, patents, handling symbols, and other legal info. All that is broken down into it. So the elements of packaging and the structural elements of packaging are the two fundamental core ideas you want to take away. Okay. And there's uh, lots of icons using packaging design to indicate different things, not only food, but just overall, okay? So uh, some of these are related to food and some of these are not, but all packaging is a factor, okay? And so now we have to talk about sustainable packaging design, right? Sustainable design or sustainable packaging really is manufactured um, using energy from renewable source sources. So packaging should remain safe and effective throughout the entire life cycle. Okay, so life cycle referring to um, from the date that it's being, you know, um, created, manufactured to its usage, right down when it goes into the trash. There should be a, a life cycle. That's a life cycle of uh, that we need to take into account. And is it set up for uh, sustainability, um, cost, performance, and safety? Right. Is this thing going to work effectively on the cost? Is it gonna perform safely? And is it gonna be safe for the environment, okay? And it involves increased um, things to keep into account, which we'll cover um, in the weeks to come. Just know that <clears throat> the whole supply chain is function, marketing, and right down to the trash and hopefully rebirth of materials from which that object is being used, okay? Um, so we have to take into account um, the overall environment and how our thing, our product, our packaging will impact the environment as a whole. So we will kind of talk a little bit about what, you know, recycling looks like and review that for a later date. Okay. We always buy stuff. So why is sustainable packaging needed? Well, because we're always consuming, we're always buying stuff. 
And um, a lot of the stuff that we're, we're buying has packaging built into it. So um, because there are things built into it, that's like double waste. We have not only the product, but we have the thing that packages or supports the product or contains the product that we need to take into account. That's millions of metric tons of carbon dioxide and methane that could go into the atmosphere if the stuff that your package is made of cannot be recycled. And so we have to be really conscious of natural resource, minerals, fossil fuels, clean water. It's almost like we have to have this separate, um, not only are we looking at design, but as packaging designers, we really have to look at what is going on in the world of sustainability, <clears throat> in addition to the world of design to kind of marry the two together, okay? Sustainable packaging is safe and healthy, um, renewable, clean, healthy, optimized, recoverable for um, a biological and industrial closed loop cycle, okay? And again, we will be continuing further in sustainability as, as the weeks come. Um, there's a great website that you'll see on Canvas that um, I, I attached, um, which is the um, uh, two sites. One is called the Die Line, and the other one's called Lovely Package. We'll talk about that in a moment. But basically, um, here's an example of water. Most water has plastic or contained in plastic. And um, <clears throat> as of at the time of me recording this uh, video, um, there are studies beginning to emerge of the of uh, of microplastics being found in fetuses of of uh, pregnant mothers and children that are born. Um, which is really interesting because now we're starting to see evidence of microplastics showing up in, in, in children and, um, and in pregnancies as a result of all the products that are using plastic, right? Why is plastic in our, in, in our bodies? Well, think about all the plastic that we consume our food in. Water is one big one. Water is wrapped in plastic. And so if the evidence um, as research continues to kind of come in and supports um, or at least leads to some um, further need to study the impact of plastics with water, well, hey, why not create a package that is not plastic to begin with? Why not make it out of carton? So this just water um, packaging is great. It's responsibly sourced, designed for the environment, manufactured for good, right? Recyclable. Um, and it has all the labels indicating recyclable plant-based. It's GMO free, which means that it has no genetically modified materials within that um, um, package or water. Um, and um, it has all the necessary labels designed effectively with a logo and brand, right? And it's, um, and it's used as a brand value. Sustainable, sustainable packages actually could serve to help a company look better. It actually can be not only a save you on money, making it for the company. Companies love as designers. If you can argue that your package actually can save people or the company money, they'll love that. And the fact that it's good for the environment, who would not want that? And as we're trending more towards healthy lifestyles after um, a pandemic, which always tends to be the trend, um, why not go in that direction? So um, anything that's sustainable is very, very helpful. However, um, very difficult for companies that are addicted to plastics or are very comfortable using plastics in their cycles or in their development, very, very difficult for them to pull away. So being sustainable uh, is great for the new company that wants to kind of stand out from the rest. If you ever end up designing packaging for an existing company that is a quote addicted or very dependent on plastics, it's going to be a greater argument. Most times, companies will not change unless they have to by force, or um, which looks like government regulation or a large customer. Their customers, a large portion of their customers, demand for change, and they're saying, um, "We're not going to make. We're not going to buy your product unless you make a change." So when, the, when they use their purchasing power to make change um, or the government um, forces them to make change, that's when these companies that are very reliant, almost addicted to these materials, that's when change happens. So if you ever end up in an organization that you see is very reliable, is almost addicted or super dependent on plastics or any material that is unrecyclable, just know there will be a fight to, to change and it will be an uphill battle for you, but if you can make it and you know that 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 the that the tides are turning, 
that's going to be a huge value, huge benefit, makes you a great designer. And ultimately, um, in my opinion, a good person, a good designer and a good human being for pushing us towards sustainability. Minimizing materials, using recycled materials, renewable materials, these are the goals, right? This is where we want to head towards, guys, okay? Minimizing recyclable, renewable energy source, okay? Plat um, Method, great organization. You've probably seen them um, around Target or even Walmart or uh, any other major retailer. But basically um, what they do is that they use, um, they use um, design, innovative design with uh, recyclable materials to create their products. So not only do they have this very modern and wonderful brand identity, and, but the form of the product is um, symbolic, right? A tear or water uh, drop to indicate health organic, right? So the form is symbolic. That's a big factor in, in packaging design is the form and the shape has symbolism in and of itself, almost like a sculpture. Um, but um, but this company also has a blend of recycled materials, plastics collected from the oceans. So that they're using it for not only a value, brand value, um, but they're also, it's good for the environment. So that's sort of the way it, it typically goes. It's a win-win situation, I like to call it, okay? Um, this is a wonderful one um, uh, from Marion uh, Mary Obando. Um, it's a clever egg carton and basically it uses newspaper and hay to contain the cushions, right? Um, they're wrapped in uh, a small piece of recycled paper with information about the product. Again, um, it has form, it has structure, there's a material, right? It has visual, it has graphics, nutritional information, handling information, right? Um, hazardous information if necessary, and it's, it's sustainable, right? So um, it's hitting all these domains really successfully. Okay, not bad. So when you're doing sustainability, minimize the risk for toxic and hazardous materials, right? Um, design it so that it, it can tr be transported, designed for reuse, okay? Keep that in the back of your mind. And here's another nice example of sustainable light bulb packaging. What do you mean, Professor? Um, well, what if the package had multiple uses? So if you see in the sketch below, you'll notice that we have a package that is a, um, it's for a light bulb, but once you take out the light bulb, that you don't have to throw it away, right? What if you can take that package that held the light bulb, right? And use it for other things to contain, maybe even to grow a plant. That's a, a concept that this student created uh, or this um, Brazilian agency, which was, net, which was originally a student piece of work where they came up with this conceptual uh, package for light bulbs. Um, it's sustainable. It actually explores the purpose of the package. So what if the package shifts through time, through need. Um, that's a great way uh, of, of using reusable um, um, or sustainable packaging. So what if that light bulb turns into a holder for my, you know, my um, forks, spoons, cutlery, right? Our knives, butter knives. That's great. That's designing for recovery. That's designing for accessibility, right? making it easy for someone to, to do something else from my package. So if the package can actually do something where it recovers something lost in my lifestyle or helps me, makes my life easier, great, why not? Okay, Puma, and also Nike has adopted this. A few, a few brands did, but I think Puma was um, the first. But they actually said, guys, why don't we actually reduce ca the carton or the board itself of all shoes by 65%? Well, how do you do that, Mr. Designer or Miss Designer? Well, why don't we just use a bag that um, and a uh, and a re and a reusable bag, right? Like a actually environmentally friendly eco packaging, like a polypropylene sort of bag, right? And why don't we use that as the surface to protect the shoe from getting dirty or scuffed from transport or being taken home by the customer? And, uh, and only use a fraction of the cardboard just for the skeleton or to hold the actual shoe in place. A little tag or a bag on top, and it can be reused for a tote bag, or it could store your shoes anytime you go to the gym or go anywhere, um, or put it in your vehicle whenever you need to use your shoes or use sneakers in like an emergency. Living in California, they, 
you know, California always says like, be prepared for earthquakes if you're ever on the streets, carry an extra pair of, of shoes or hiking shoes or walking shoes in case you need to walk, right? So these are these are things that we can, we can kind of create packaging for. Like what if it actually has a life beyond its, its initial purpose, which is to get it to the store? What if it actually does more after it gets home and, and actually after it's used? So resources are available online, but I want to shift gears and just share a little bit of the um, uh, the exercise that we're going to be doing. And so here's um, here's the exercise that we're going to do. And let me go ahead and open that up. Forgive the gray screen if that's showing up in the video. But <clears throat> what we're going to do is that we're going to do the uh, principles of packaging design. So this exercise that we're about to embark on is that we're going to look for, um, is that we're going to look for five bad packages or badly designed packages and five good packaging designs. And we're gonna identify what makes them bad, what makes them good through the elements of design packaging. So looking at the structural, uh, the structural principles and also the visual or graphic design principles. And we're gonna write about them. So we're gonna to go to these two links. Um, one is um, www.thedieline.com and the other one is www.lovelypackage.com, um, which are found also online on Canvas. And you're gonna explore these sites and look for packaging that you like. These are good design examples, okay? Um, for both sites, okay? And you'll more than likely um, have to Google for bad packaging examples, or you might actually find pack packaging that you think is badly pack is badly designed in this site. Although this is this is designed to be curated for good design, uh, chances are you might not find it uh, here, or it's very unlikely you'll find bad packaging design. But it can happen um, if you can make the argument, of course. Um, or you can use packaging that you have at home. You can photograph it. Um, you can, good or bad, right? I have a feeling we'll probably see bad packaging in our houses than we do online. But whatever you find, take a picture of it and use that for your slide. And what you're going to do is basically use um, the principles uh, or the elements of design and packaging, right? Structural and visual to write um, a um, structured paragraph describing those elements, okay? And so as we go over it in class, we will review what these elements look like. So um, just a short form answer. Um, when it's a good design, we will basically be writing on um, how these principles are being used properly. So in this package, there are multiple structural and visual principles of packaging design. The principles of packaging design at play in this um, Kindred packaging are shape, size, material, function, brand identity, nutritional information, manufacturing information, um, handling information. And we'll see in the, you know, uh, out of all these principles, the most evident of these is uh, the traditional packaging, which is a functional milk carton form. We also notice that the material of the carton is recyclable, which allows for more uh, sustainability. Uh, we also find a clear brand identity, coherent brand identity, which is exemplified in the classic typeface that dates to the late 1800s. Um, we also see nutritional handling and manufacturing information, which is found in the design as seen in the rear or side panels of the carton, um, where a structured hierarchy of information is legible uh, to the customer at all times. That's sort of an example of a well-written, um, good design format. Now, how do you write for a bad design? Well, you're gonna use things like in this package, there are, here are the key terms, you're gonna say things like confusing uh, structural and visual principles. You're also gonna mention things like misunderstood um, elements of packaging, right? You're also gonna write down mixed messages um, within your write-up. And so you wanna indicate that in your writing, okay? So, uh, miscommunicated, um, these are key words, right? Um, now, even though bad is a strong term, it's um, a strong term. I would say they are um, confusing designs or miscommunicated because, you know, we know it's bad, but you know, we want to be encouraging um, to clients who, you know, if they want to say it's bad, it is bad. But I would say like, you know, well, there, it's confusing design. This is misunderstood design. This is poorly designed packaging. 
So um, whatever the term, you know, at the end of the day, it is bad, but it's poorly designed ultimately. Um, and so for this uh, Fabuloso packaging, this package, there are confusing structural and visual principles of packaging design. Um, the principles of packaging design that are misunderstood in this packaging are shape, size, material, um, function, brand, identity, nutritional information, handling information, um, and um, manufacturing information. So these mixed messages is, uh, the first of these mixed messages is, is the shape of the package, right? Which conveys a clear drink-like plastic bottle shape that can endanger the life of the customer, or in this case, a young person, if they were to drink it. We also see that the material or color of the fluid is so similar, is very similar to the popular drinks, which further confuses youth consumers to drink this product. In addition, the supposed chemical detergent brand identity, um, the supposed chemical detergent brand identity is strongly miscommunicated by colorful and playful typefaces and food imagery, which is strongly suggesting the product is to be consumed orally, despite its improper attempt to label and position the baking soda and multi-purpose chemical call out in the lower right section of the package. So as you write this, we want to include words like mis misunderstood, missed message, confusing, miscommunicated, um, poorly designed, and indicate the impact um, and how it's being done so that we know why it's bad and why it's uh, incorrect. And like we do um, anything we write, if you can reverse engineer not only what's good, but also what's bad, you can go towards the good and design what is good because now you understand what made it up, what create, what it takes to create that successful package, and you know what to avoid because now people are involved in people's health um, um, is on the line as well. So I think this is an important exercise because we're going towards what works, but we're also protecting people and potentially saving lives by using design properly. Okay. So that's um, the time. I want to make sure I honor the time that we have. So the first things first, select five images, um, five good designs. Okay. And use the die line or lovely package um, curated sites to look for them. I love those sites. Um, and look for bad packaging designs either online by Googling or find bad packaging design at home and take photos with your mobile device or any, any type of camera and bring that into the design and tell us why you think that's bad. I think we'll find some success, okay? All right, guys, enjoy the exercise. I will join you momentarily in our live session to answer any questions that you might have. We'll see you then.